share the love with South Africa's most loved dog food, Bobtail, for strong South African dogs. Now, one of the most relaxing things you can do with your pup is to go for a nice long walk. But one of the not so relaxing things is when you let them off the lead and they hit the road and you battle to get them back. So how do you do that? Well, luckily we have Karis Bryan, who's going to tell us all about that. Karis, welcome back to Espresso. Good Very morning. Nice to have you. So I enjoy walking with my dogs. I really do. But it's always very, you know, it's, it breaks that, 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 that calmness you have during your walk when they just hit the road and you have to battle to get them back. Mm. So, so it's what's dangerous. the deal? You can have a dog that runs away. Yeah. No, what if they run across the road. I yep. mean, it's like that. All right, so... Well, today, this morning, yes. I have an extra challenge for us this morning, for me, I suppose. An extra challenge. <laughs> All right. Um, we have Daisy. Now, Daisy is a basset hound. All right. Basset hounds, any hound, uh, beagles are the same, bloodhounds, all yes. the different houndy dogs. What they've been bred to do, as most people know, is pick up a scent and follow their nose. That's so it. more so than any any other breeds or group of breeds. <laughs> yeah. um, and as you can see, Daisy's not even interested in us. She's just following her sniffing, nose around, sniffing, all sniffing, the time. sniffing, sniffing. Now, I, I want to focus specifically on hounds for this little conversation okay. because there's a misconception that you can never let these dogs off the lead. All I right. hear that quite often. Even some breeders tell people who get basset down puppies, you can never let them go. Really? And that's actually not true. You just have to work harder to teach them to come okay. back. So there's okay? hope. There's, there's hope. always hope. <laughs> you just have to know what you're doing. Right. So when you have a dog like Daisy, or as I yes. say, any hound, and this, what I'm going to show this morning, good girl, <laughs> this also applies to any breed. Yes. But if you have a scent hound, you need to work harder. You All need right. to practice a lot more. And I guess you have to have more patience. <laughs> Always patience. patience. What's our golden rule around here? <laughs> patience, patience. That's it. So Daisy now has never been to the studio before. Yes. And she's been now for the first time is looking at me. She's been completely absorbed in her nose. Mm. So what you need to do if you have got a basset hound is practice calling them to come very often. And you want to start first in your house because the smells there are less interesting. Okay. okay? In other words, if you cannot get your dog to come inside, yeah. you're never going to get your dog to come outside. Right? Yes, it's... Okay, step one, step two. All right. So the thing that you want to do is use something rewarding like food or toys that your dog is yes. keen on. And, then, and practice when you want your dog to come, walk away from them. Daisy, <laughs> come. And as they're moving in, see there's the nose. Yes. As they're moving in your direction, say, come. Yeah. <laughs> Daisy, <laughs> come. Don't you just love basset hounds? They're brilliant. Come. Good girl, yes. And there then when go. they actually make it back to you, reward yes. them, OK? And as I say, Daisy's being a perfect example of a basset hound because she's very distracted in a new environment. Yes. The way to work with that is to take her to lots of new environments and practice, practice, practice. All right. When you call a dog to come, you mustn't be angry. It doesn't work to say, Rover, Rover, Rover! which everybody does. <laughs> Scared me the first yeah. second. <laughs> come here right now! Ah! <laughs> if you shout at your dog, if you, if you growl at them, they're not yeah. going to come back to you. Why would they? Right. You're sounding aggressive. They're not going to run to you if you sound aggressive. That's you don't have to do baby talk, but if you get a squeaky toy, okay, yeah. that's a great way to distract your dog if they're a little bit lost, especially if they're lost in their nose. Right. So calling your dog should be a friendly thing, and you want to give them some kind of reward that they value. Daisy, come. Good. So I'm giving her a little bit of biltong. There. Yeah. Now, in the five minutes since Daisy's been up here, she's doing better because she wasn't even eating the biltong. She was so distracted by the smells. Yes. Daisy, come. Good. Look at that. There we go. Look at that. Now, to start, when you teach a dog to come, if it's yeah. two steps, that's fine. Eventually, you'll get her to come from a kilometer away, but yeah. you've got to start realistically. Daisy, come. 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 Yeah. Good girl and then a little treat, because you can teach her to listen. You can absolutely teach these dogs to come back. You've just got to work harder than you would with most breeds. Awesome. So, and you also need to obviously start from a young age, like, like Daisy. She's four months old now. She's four months old. Ideally from a young age, but even if your dog is older, you can teach them. It'll just take yeah. longer. But if you've got a pup, start right away. Find a good puppy school, practice, 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 and you can do it. And then when they can actually run and be dogs off lead, it's such a pleasure. It's fantastic. That's, it's awesome. Karis, thank you so much. Let me see if I can pleasure. do this. Daisy. Come on, come here. Well done. Look at that. Give me a there. piece of bacon. There we How go. How cute is this dog, hey? Very, very cute. Wasn't that just awesome? So for awesome tips like these, go to happydogs.co.za and you can teach your dog literally anything. Yes, my girl. Yes. <laughs>